Today, my friends, we conclude the semi-finals of the Opera Euro Rapid. Magnus Carlsen has a 1-0 lead against MVL, and Wesley So is up 1-0 against Timur Rajabov. Both of those players need to win today's Rapid portion to force a Blitz, and then either win the Blitz or win in the Armageddon. We're going to begin with Wesley So versus Timur Rajabov like we did yesterday, and if you're wondering why $320,000 is on the thumbnail with all these guys throwing up money, they didn't do that, that's mild clickbait, but we did that! We raised $320,000 on today's tournament broadcast. We're going to try to do this every single one of these tournaments. And if you'd like to participate in donating, there is a link in the description below. All right, let's go. So the first two games of uh, Timur Ajabov and Wesley So were drawn. And the score was 1-1. One to one. Now, Timur's got the white pieces here in game number three. And he has to win to keep things going. He's got to get at least two and a half out of four. So let's see. Timur plays d4. Wesley plays knight f6, c4, e6, very standard. By the way, the more you watch of these recaps, the more you should try to emulate how these players play. Just fair note. So knight c3, bishop b4. This is known as the Nimso Indian, and the big struggle here is pinning this knight to this king, and white wants to play the move e4, but is not allowed to do so. So white plays the move f3. It's one of the more aggressive dynamic systems, and when I say aggressive and dynamic, I really mean it. Black plays c5, attacking the center, white pushes, and now black plays castles, e4 and this move b5 trying to just explode the center because in a perfect world white would play bishop d3 knight e2 and castle and live very happily these pawns are super strong of course white does have some dark squared weaknesses given all these pawns are on the light squares but white would be very happy instead and by the way timur is not like on tilt you know on tilt sometimes you hop this knight out to the side of the board he does that because he doesn't want to block his bishop now we get bc bishop takes takes you say wait a minute why doesn't he just take this with the pawn well Always got to look for how your opponent can attack you, right? How can black check us? I know there's this. There's also this move. And look at that. That queen is like a sundial on the side of the board, hitting the bishop on c4, the bishop unguarded. So instead of that, we get knight d5 and take, take, and now take like this. Wesley sees that his rook in the corner is under attack, so he moves the knight out. Can't take this, obviously, protected. And here Timur should castle. He should just get his king out of the middle. But Timur plays bishop e3. And now Wesley stomps him from castling. How does he do that? He asks him very nicely. He types it in the chat. Hey, Timur, please don't castle. No. Wesley plays bishop a6. Uh, and now the king is not allowed to go through check. So we get knight f4, queen h4 check. Why would he just do that? Well, Wesley induces a pawn move and weakens the f3 square. And now g5 is possible in some positions because the pawn over here is weak. So Timur plays king f2, because he's seen the bond cloud speed run from Hikaru's channel. He knows that putting the king out like that is obviously pretty good. Wesley takes, takes, and plays rook b8. Doesn't even take the free pawn, instead taking advantage of the access point on b2. Timur doesn't like that very much, plays the move rook d1, trying to meet rook b2 with rook d2. So we get knight e5. Why knight e5? Guards this, idea here, idea g5 to strike on f3. Bishop c5, rook b2 check, rook d2, and now knight d3. A beautiful move, probably... Something that Timur saw, but the problem is that he has to create some crazy imbalance to try to play this position for a win. Timur's logic is that I'm going to go all out in this game. If I make another draw, then that means uh, I have to win the next game with black. So let me just come in here. I don't know. I, I, I would be surprised if he blundered this, just deflecting the queen and the rook. And if you take, if you take like this, I'm taking your rook and I'm just going to win. So he goes the queen down for a rook and a knight. Well, now not even that anymore. Now it's a rook and a bishop. And the way you're going to win this position is you are going to play a very important pawn break, an offer of a pawn trade, uh, which will open up your position advantageously. There's a king on f2 here, so that's exactly what Wesley does. Watch how deliberately Wesley does this. Look, Timur has to sack back the pawn uh, and now go for this one. And Timur has some chances here, but Wesley, just so accurate. Rook e8 hitting the bishop, comes back, and now this... Very nice move f4, high level move. If bishop takes, the queen is infiltrating. Oh, not 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 there, not there. The queen is infiltrating there. Uh, there it'll get taken. That 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 looks like one of your games. Uh, no, I'm sorry. That was very. That was that was not nice. That was not nice. Bad Gotham. All right, let's continue. Bishop takes f4. Queen e2 check. King g1. And you say, well, why doesn't he just take it like this? You're right, but then there's queen h5, and the problem is that you've damaged the structure. So bishop takes f4, queen e2 check, king g1, and now we take. And Wesley now at this point just has to play the role of cleanup, and he does exactly that. I know I'm flying through the moves, but 
Wesley has an outside pass pawn. If that pawn did not exist, this would be much closer to a draw because white can create something known as a fortress, which is when you create an unbreakable little structure on one side of the board. But it was Timur who brought the queen's sacrifice of the bishop. Look at that, deflecting the bishop away from the defense. And now promotion, and uh, Wesley went on to win this very easily. Did I say Timur sacked the queen? No, it was Wesley sacrificing, and now we got this, and the game is over. Wesley can obviously be playing this position for a win, but uh, Timur doesn't even, he just resigns. He doesn't want any part of this, and uh, on that solemn note, Wesley took a 2-1 lead, and mathematically Timur is eliminated, so Wesley wins 2 to nothing, and is our first finalist. Now, we move on to the main event of the evening. It seems like every match Magnus Carlsen is involved in is a barn burner. The first two games of the Magnus Carlsen match were also drawn. So it's 1-1. MVL is in the same position. He's got the white pieces, though. Timur also had the white pieces. So let's see what we get. We get e4, c5, and obviously we get knight c6, which is what Magnus Carlsen plays, Russell Limo, e6, and knight e7. The idea being that if you take on c6, I want to take back with the knight. We've already seen Wesley play this, but b3 is not what we saw Wesley play. Wesley played rookie one against Timur yesterday. You remember that? I'm sure you do. You saw the recap. You saw the recap, right? All right, let's keep going. So b3, the point being that you want to put your bishop on b2. Now Magnus plays this really interesting move. He doubles his own pawns, but he's able to kind of kick out the dark square bishop by playing knight c6. Now f4. By this point in the game, the players reached the position that had never been played before after the move d5. And look at this. Rather than taking, rather than pushing, he understands that this capture actually improves his own position. So he plays king h1. What does king h1 enable? It enables you to take back with the pawn. Because otherwise, d3 would happen. Right? So king h1 is what's known as a prophylactic move. That is the longest word that I know. And I only know it because of chess. All my words that I usually know are about seven, eight letters or less. And prophylactic, that's a pretty big word, so I'm proud of myself. King h1 steps out of the way of this. It's a move that anticipates danger in the future, and you slide out of the way. So we get a3. Why a3? He wants to prevent knight b4. He also wants to play b4 in the future himself. Queen e1. Another very common attacking idea in closed positions, maneuvering the queen out with a couple of moves. So now we get takes, takes, Magnus plays bishop b7, and we get knight f3. If you give white a few more moves, white will put this bishop on this diagonal, play knight g5, play queen h4, and Magnus Carlsen will get checkmated. And Magnus Carlsen is a pretty darn good chess player, but he's not immune to checkmates. So queen c7, e5. Now here Magnus says, well, this pawn is advancing in the middle, I got all this free space now, when the pawn goes to a dark square, that means that my knight can rotate back and it can, uh, in, and it can try to take advantage. And if my knight rotates back, then I open up my bishop. Fantastic, knight e7. Except knight e7 is a losing mistake. Because now this bishop has no squares. And b4. Magnus Carlsen played a backwards knight move and got his bishop trapped. Straight up trapped in the middle of the board. That's it. And uh, here was his reaction when he got his bishop trapped. It's actually something slightly different than you would expect. He sits back, he stares, and then he just laughs. It's kind of good to see Magnus smiling. And by the way, that, that hair slick. My god, look at that. I'm telling you, he looks like a mafioso. He looks like a guy that's about to show up and uh, tell you some not nice words. Also, there was a, there was a tongue stuck out, and yeah, MVL's doing his thing. And So it's good to see Magnus Carlsen in a, in a pretty decent mood. Uh, this game went on for a short while, uh, but Magnus is just down a piece. I will show it to you out of respect for both players. Because I never really, I know I, sk I go fast through moves, but I never just cut the game short. Uh, you know, the usual conversion. And uh, Magnus played out a little bit. And he might have played that just to kind of get some emotions off. Just play it out a little bit. Just, you know, get the bad vibes off. Wash it all off. And uh, MVL, I mean, MVL just did what you're supposed to do when you're up a PC. Consolidated. He made sure that nothing could get taken. And MVL wins. So MVL has a 2-1 to lead. Now... It's not over. If Magnus wins this next game, he ties the match 2-2 two to two today, and he wins. Because he won yesterday, so that would be 1.5 to half. So we go to the next game. Now Magnus Carlsen with the white pieces. Magnus with white, MVL with black. We already know what we're going to get. Chess. Very good. Welcome to a Gotham Chess recap. D4, Knight F6, and a Grunfeld. 
We've seen a lot of different Grunfeld variations that Magnus has thrown at MVL. Bishop d2, Bishop g7, e4, and this we saw already yesterday in the first game. We also saw it in the first game of today's match, but that game ended in a draw. I didn't show you that game. What? You, you didn't watch yesterday's recap, so you didn't know that this already happened? Oh, okay, I see. Got it. Uh-huh. I'm disappointed. Castles, a4. Wait a minute. Yesterday, Magnus played h3, knight f3, and no a4, a5 idea. It's actually funny. In this position, a4 takes us to three games ever played. Now, there might have been other games played, just not recorded. You know, there might have been a game played at a, uh, at a local chess club. There might have been a game played between, you know, two guys who were drinking beer. What's your favorite beer, by the way? I love a blue moon. Just for, the, for those that drink it, if you're like 14, just keep going. You, do, do, you, don't, you don't need to talk about beer. Knight c6, knight f3, and knight b4. Very common stuff. This is called an outpost square for the black knight on b4. It stands comfortably. It cannot get kicked out. Magnus plays bishop e2. MVL plays c6. What's crazy is that at this point, Magnus was thinking a lot, which is like, I mean, the fact that he's thinking is not crazy. The fact that he had five minutes left. He played knight g5 attacking the bishop. MVL moved it, looking for a trade. Rook c1. Magnus forces the trade, takes back with the knight, and plays f4. Gets really aggressive. But MVL plays h6 to kick out the knight, and then e6, and then c5. And it's like, wait a minute. One, two, three. Aren't I just winning that trade? Like, I'm going to take and take. You take my queen, we go into an endgame where I'm up a pawn. But queen c6 comes, Magnus is down three minutes to eight, and this position is not clear at all. Even for the cost of one pawn, because black is counterbalancing that compensation with activity, this is about to happen. Magnus plays e5, but the rook comes in. The knight blocks. Where's the queen going to go? The queen's going to get all up in your territory. Look at that. The queen's got one, two, three, four, five targets and a square to boot, because that's where the knight is coming. This hits everybody. Really unpleasant position for Magnus Carlsen, who at this point played the absolutely inexplicable Queen d3. Now, when I used to teach five-year-olds, queen d3 would get played, and that kid would go, I'm attacking the queen. And I would have to teach those kids that queens can't really attack queens because the queen could take. Not to mention that, in this case, there is also a knight here. So the only explanation is that queen d2 was what Magnus meant to play, but he mouse slipped. So I don't really know what happened, but what I do know is that I actually have a clip of this exact moment in the game, and uh, it does involve... Uh, Another funny reaction. Not really an angry reaction, just kind of a, you know, just the Magnus being like... <laughs> I don't... And then just resigning. I don't... Like, watch, you'll see the move happen right now. And then he just... He's like, doesn't even react. No one reacts. Absolutely no one reacts. I'm like, wait a minute. The guy just put his queen on d3. What do you mean no one reacts? What... These players will react all the time, and then sometimes they're just like... They make like a, you know, I don't know. They played the move queen d3. I don't know, maybe he was... Maybe he was trying to do an Alexander Botez impression. Botez Gambit. You guys always want, want, want that? There you go. You got a real-life Botez Gambit. And with that note, MVL wins 3-1. Which means that the score is back to zeros. MVL won himself a rapid. It's time for Blitz. First game of Blitz. Magnus has white. Knight f3, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, d5. So the difference is that d4 has not been played. cd5, knight d5. So it's a Grunfeld, but there's no d4. So what do you do? Obviously, ladies and gentlemen, you already know, it's a game between two super GMs. Boink! Little h4 action for y'all. Knight c3, d... Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Why did you... What? Yeah, it's theory. They've played this before. Now black plays a move, which, again, to the uninitiated, doesn't, make, doesn't look like it makes any sense. F6. I mean, again, kids are watching. I don't know. This is a very bad example. Not getting a knight out, not getting a bishop out, not getting a bishop out, but F6. But this is, uh, this is theory. This is literally, they have played this before. In fact, up until this moment in the game on knight d7, they had played this before. It was Carlsen MVL 2020 in December, December 27th. I'm not remembering that off the top of my head. I, I looked up the game before I... I'm not that smart, okay? Don't worry. Knight d7, knight d4, knight e5, and now black castles, and Magnus gets his king out of the way. So it's kind of like Magnus castled kingside as well. Magnus is going to develop his pieces and see what happens. Bishop e3, c5 immediately attacking the knight. The knight jumps back to f3. 
You can either trade. You don't want me to take you because then you take and I take your free pawn. So MVL says, knight g4, you can take my free pawn, but now where's your bishop going to go? Magnus says, right back. Take it, I dare you. MVL says, all right, you got damage structure. Now MVL has a choice. Is he going to play g4 and come around this way? Or is he going to play e5 and come around this way? And MVL chooses this way. But Magnus gets his knight jump to the middle. And after takes, takes bishop h6, this is under attack. If you push it, I play rook d2 and I fork your king and bishop, defended by this. The king cannot guard because you would hang your king, and that's illegal. You cannot go here because of my pawn. So how do you protect the pawn? I'll take a sip, hold on. Correct! You have something called tactical defense. Rook e1, which maybe MVL overlooked. Now this cannot be taken because you have bishop check. Beautiful, huh? Look at that. So MV Magnus plays this. MVL goes here. Magnus goes here. You can't take anymore. Magnus goes immediately for this. The move bishop c4 cuts the g8 square from the enemy rook to guard this pawn. Now Magnus is up two pawns. And he converts this with no problems whatsoever. He gives a check. He strengthens the center. Once the bishop comes off the board, I mean, the rook comes off the board, he starts advancing on the queen side. King b3 a4, a6, and he slides his rook over. He's advancing on the queen side while the bishop shuts down the rook. Rook comes to the defense, but now the key pawn breaks c4. And here MVL resigned. He resigned because rook c2 is coming, rook d2 is coming, the infiltration, and even just chugging straight along there with b5. And the game is over. And the game is over. Magnus Carlsen up 1-0 in the blitz. MVL must win the next blitz game or his campaign is over. MVL's got the white pieces, and why not? It worked once. Repeat it. Five minutes and three second bonus, remember. So e6, castles, 97. Last time MVL played b3. This time MVL says, I don't want this guy to have any preparation. Rook e1. Magnus goes for the exact same idea. Now we get c3. a6, bishop f1. Knight c6. And now, once again, even though kids are watching, MVL plays b4. And really, the fact that kids are watching doesn't, doesn't phase him at all. He plays a4. Only GMs can play like this. Okay, it's the 10th move of the game. All of White's pieces are asleep in their bunkers. Only the pawns are out and about. But why this is possible is because you can play on the queen side. And Black's position is difficult. Black has double D pawns. This bishop is kind of stuck. So we get takes, takes, and now bishop f6. And here, MVL. I don't know if MVL plays poker, but he would be a master at bluffing. He plays the move b5, and it's like, wait a minute. MVL was firing off moves. It's a five-minute game, and at this point, he has 526 on the clock because you get three-second bonus time. If you're looking at this, you say, that's just a fork. You're right. And for example, if he had played rook to b1, and this, this got taken, then he would have gone here. And then this is hanging, and this is hanging. The top engine line after rook b1 is ab5, and then rook e3 hitting the bishop. And all sorts of craziness. B4, knight, B5. I don't even know. Some totally wild stuff. And rather than even get involved in this, Magnus said, nah, I'm just going to take and go here. And the position that we end up getting looks like this. So MVL is completely equal in terms of material. He's up a little bit on the clock. Got an isolated pawn here that he could target. He could target this as well. But... Here, after bishop e6, rather than playing bishop d3 and focusing on the king side to h7, MVL plays the move rook b1, and Magnus Carlsen says, wait a minute, something used to guard that. Now it's only the queen. How about this? Bam! d4. And if you take it, I'm going to take on a4. So MVL says, all right, I can't have everything get traded. So knight c7, takes, takes, slide my queen out of the way. You can't take. This is, pit, this is hit, and this is uh, your rook is hanging. Queen f6. Queen, rook, battery to f2, f3. Now, MV, uh, Maxime, oh my gosh, not MVL or Maxime, Magnus Carlsen spent a lot of time in this position, went down to about 40 seconds on the clock and offered a queen trade. And MVL said, queen trade? Sure, but what about this pawn? And I'm threatening bishop b5, which is just a fork. Magnus said, okay, and I got knight d8. You take my rook, I take your rook. MVL said, all right, and your rook is now hanging and your pawn is hanging and I'm threatening to get in here. Two rooks on the seventh or second rank, depending what color you are. Very dangerous in the endgame. So rook b4, rook e7. Look at that. Look at that move. You take my bishop. Very common mating pattern. Bam, 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 bam. And mate. 
The two rooks stack with the king and the rook like this. Very common. Keep that in mind. So, MVL brought back. Look at that tactical shot. Rook f5. There's back rank mate. And then he went two pawns down. He won the c3 pawn. And then the way MVL converted this was just beautiful. Watch. Look at this. Knight e6, right? Takes. Takes. Take. Whoa. Pin. W wait a minute. King f2. You know why he did this? Because MVL knew that this endgame was winning. The king in three versus king in two. You know why? Yes, he's a super GM. But he watched the Gotham chess king and pawn endgame video. That is why. He's got more pawn activity. And he outflanks the king. He uses opposition. Brings his pawn forward. And here converts it. Look at this. F6, the key move. And Magnus resigns. Because after takes king f5, this is known as opposition. And these two pawns are split. King goes here, outflank, I take your pawn. King goes here, outflank. King is out of moves. Passive king, passive pawns, dominated opposition, and MVL wins. And ladies and gentlemen, we are going to an Armageddon. Magnus Carlsen has the choice, given that he's the higher seed. White gets five, whoa. A bug just flew by me. Look at that, we got a bug in the recap too. Magnus Carlsen chooses to play with the white pieces. He gets five minutes. Black gets four minutes. If black makes a draw, black wins. We already saw this against Daniel Duboff. Here we go. D4, knight f6, c4, g6. We have another Grunfeld. Takes, takes, and bishop d2. Now we get bishop g7, e4, and a repeat. Seen this before, right? You've been watching. a4, a5. However, in this position, MVL lashes out. He says, I have enough. f5. We get e takes, bishop takes, and bishop e2. Magnus slow plays the opening and gets to a position where he's finished this development, all his pieces have moved. Unlike the last game where all of MVL's pieces were asleep in the back rank. King h8. Now watch. Knight takes. Knight takes, bishop c4. Nice and centralizing move. You can't play b5. You control that square. Activate this, activate this with two moves. With one move, you activate two pieces. Knight b4, queen b3, rook d8, now Magnus says, that pawn looks a little soft. That pawn looks a little soft. How about I hit it? Bishop f6, get out there. You play bishop g7, which is what he did. I can take and whoop, I can take and I can weaken your king. Or I can even play this. Bringing my queen with my rook, hitting this, and defending my bishop. MVL plays rook e8. Magnus plays bishop back to f4. Why is he doing this? He's doing this so, well, knight d5 happened, but he's doing this so that he can go here and trade from this angle. He's also doing this to keep more pieces on the board to milk MVL's clock to make him think because MVL's down a minute. Knight d5 counterattacking the queen but takes takes and rook c5. Uh-oh. Who's guarding this? Answer? Nobody. The queen can come back but in doing so MVL weakens his king. Bishop back to c8. This is why I said nobody. Because the queen can guard the a5 pawn but... I mean, MVL just really likes to put his pieces on the back rank, and sometimes when, you, when it, it works when you're white, but it doesn't work when you're playing with black. Look at this move, Queen H. So look at this move. You can't take, and if you take this, I could take back the bishop. I also got knight g5. I could just leave this bishop, and it's mate, and it can't be stopped. So Queen H6, Rook F6, and now he goes down the exchange. Magnus brings back his queen, offering a trade, and wins the a5 pawn, and then goes to a7. At this point, Magnus has about 120 on the clock. MVL's got about 145. The time is ticking. Queen to b8. Now queen to a5, king to g7, rook infiltrates. Magnus brings, uh, I apologize, MVL brings his queen forward. He's trying to look for counterplay. Queen c1, bishop d6. It's never too late to lose the game, right? You and I both know that, but these guys are on a different level. Queen d8. He anticipates this. He moves his king and queen back to f4. Because to be honest, if bishop d6 got played in this position, just g3. Just g3 and there's no more checks. So bishop goes to d6. Just g3, so block. King h1. Point being that if you play queen c1, I'm going to block with my knight. Look at that. Queen b8 offers a trade. Queen here and rook a7. The game is over. MVL resigns. MVL resign in this position because queen b7 is coming and you just can't do anything. You play queen c4. I can go here, 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 and that's it. The most instructive thing that Magnus did was right here. 
The zig and the zag. The little triangulation technique. And then the knight comes back to g1. Super important if you're trying to get out of perpetuals. And again, let's not take for granted this balcony for the king to escape. And with that, Magnus Carlsen won the blitz. And with that, Magnus Carlsen won the overall score. And he qualifies to play against Wesley So in the finals of the Opera Euro Rapid. One final reaction from Magnus Carlsen. We always put reactions of the players messing up. But it's always good to see some positivity. Here he played Rook A7. MVL resigned. And Magnus Carlsen let out a very happy smile. And one of these. I guess the stress was finally over. He kept it cool, kept it positive. He's also got a nice fly shirt there. Looking like silk that he's wearing. That looks really nice. So congratulations to him. Wesley So went through it very calmly. And he moves on to play against Magnus Carlsen. They had this already in the skilling open. And Wesley So defeated Magnus Carlsen. Let me know who you think is going to win this time around. I'll see you in the next recap.